We just have to think 14 moves ahead, that's all. Welcome to What Gear Reviews. Today, I have the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G here. And what I'm gonna do is do a very, very quick unboxing and then walk you guys through the top 10 things I recommend you do if you've just bought one of these. These are things that are gonna improve the performance of your new device. Now, I just wanna say, it's come to my attention that around 90% of the people that watch this channel are not subscribed, which is crazy. If you're a tech fan and you like smartphone reviews, headphone reviews, and loads of other tech-related stuff, then definitely consider subscribing. And if you do that, you will be one of the finest subscribers known to man, and you'll also make my day. So I'd appreciate it. Anyway, let's get this thing out of the box. So of course Samsung are following suit here and going for the slim box, which means there is no charger in here. Wow, look at that. Still shows a few fingerprints, you can see, but they evaporate pretty quickly. So my first impressions on this thing is, wow, look at this thing. I love this camera module here, it's amazing. Look how they've chamfered the edges underneath the glass. I love how it wraps around as part of the metal frame. That is really nice. This looks like something that could be part of Darth Vader's chest plate. You only knew the power of the dark side. So let's see what else comes with this in the box now that we don't have a charger. So we just got this nice little packet here with your USB-C to USB-C cable quick start guide and a warranty card and that is it. So they've really cut back on packaging a lot, but they've done a good job of it. Okay, so the first thing, as you probably noticed, is there was no charger in this box, which means you're gonna need a charger and you want the right charger. So I experimented a little bit with a couple of different chargers. So first of all, I've got this one here, which came with an Oppo device. This is a super fast, 65 watt charger. Then I've got my Sony charger here. This is an 18 watt charger. Now, which one of these do you reckon will charge this phone the fastest? Now, you might be thinking the 65 watt. Well, actually, you're wrong. Because when you plug a 65 watt charger into this phone, it actually slow charges, which is crazy. The fastest speed that this phone can charge at is 25 watt. So if you really wanna get the optimal charging speeds on this device, you should get a 25 watt charger, ideally from Samsung. I will link some alternatives below this video that you guys can check out if you want. But check this out, this 18 watt charger here from Sony actually fast charges this device. This phone does support quick charge too, up to 25 watts and 10 watts wireless charging as well. So make sure you get yourself a decent charger, get yourself the right one. Don't go for the fastest one because it might not necessarily charge it the fastest. The other thing you want to do as well, and I haven't even done this myself yet, is get yourself a good case because as nice as that back is, at some point you might scratch it. And if you scratch one of these bits of glass over the cameras, you're probably going to compromise the cameras completely. So I recommend a case. I'm actually going to order a Lou later case. And if like me, you can only afford to buy yourself toilet paper and water at the moment, you could look at mobilefun.co.uk because they've got a range of cases from the official cases all the way down to the cheaper ones. So you have a good selection there. I'll link them below as well. All right, now let's get into the good stuff. The stuff that you guys need to do when you first get this device. So first thing I recommend you do, and I say this because this phone screen might be the best mobile phone screen ever made and you want to see what it can do. It's like getting a Ferrari and not actually testing out how fast it can go. I recommend you redline what this device can do at the beginning, see what it's capable of, slowly scale it back and see if you notice a difference. So first thing I recommend you do is go into your display options, go to your settings, go to display, go here to your screen resolution. Now you've got three different resolutions. You've got HD, you've got Full HD Plus, which it defaults to out of the box, and then you've got the maximum, Quad HD. Set it to Quad HD. This is gonna give you the maximum resolution that this phone is capable of, and one of the best things and very unique things about this device is it can actually display this Quad HD at 120 frames per second, 120 hertz. Now, as standard, out of the box, it's already on adaptive, which means it's gonna scale up to that 120 hertz when it needs to. If you want to later on, 
scale back that resolution to full HD+, scale back the motion smoothness to 60 hertz, which is what an iPhone has. In fact, to this day, an iPhone user, anybody who's only been using iPhones would have never experienced 120 hertz. So that's why I suggest you set it to 120, make the most of this screen, make the most of the resolution straight away. Next thing you should do within the same settings is absolutely switch on your dark mode. Now, dark mode will change all of your system menus, dark like this, and I say do this for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's better for your eyes, but second of all, it's better for your battery life as well. Now, a couple of things you should do is, in certain apps like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you have to go into the settings in those apps to switch the dark modes on, and YouTube as well. Go into the settings on those apps, switch on all your dark modes. It looks cool, and it serves a purpose, it saves you power. So this one's very important. You can search through your settings here or you can literally just type in security here and then find your secure lock settings. So within your lock screen settings, you can choose what kind of unlock methods you want. And there's a couple of things you need to be really aware of with any device. So when you've only got a single camera like this in the front of a device and you set up a face unlock, for example, the face unlock will just be a 2D face unlock. So actually, if someone had a really nice clear picture of you and held it up in front of that camera, because it's a 2D image that it recognizes, they could potentially unlock your phone with just an image. So face unlock is not necessarily the best way to go on this particular device. If you're not that worried about security, I would say, yeah, set up your face unlock. It's gonna be much easier to use. The most secure methods to use on this particular device is gonna be a fingerprint reader or a pin number, and a pin number is mandatory, so you should have already set that up by this point. The fingerprint unlock, however, is what I recommend, and I highly recommend it for a couple of reasons. And keep this in mind as well, guys. A lot of phones have fingerprint unlock, but they use a 2D method, just like the 2D face unlock. So it fires a beam of light up, scans your thumb, for the fingerprint ridges and then it unlocks. This phone has Qualcomm's ultrasonic fingerprint unlock. So it actually uses a 3D method to scan your thumb using sonic vibrations and it's actually one of the most secure ways to do it. And the other great thing about this particular device is it's got the latest version of this. It's got Qualcomm Sonic Fingerprint Reader 2.0 which has a bigger area as well. And for my testing of it, it's really, really fast and very accurate too. Set up your fingerprints, set up your face if you're not that worried about it. And of course you've got patterns and pin numbers as well. I do recommend you set those up if needs be too. Now going back to the main settings menu on the device, there's something else that I recommend you do and a lot of people probably aren't even aware of this. It's your location services. So I tend to do this on pretty much all my devices. Location accuracy. So if these are ticked, on your device as active. Basically what your phone's gonna do is scan for Wi-Fi signals even when you switch your Wi-Fi off, which is gonna drain battery and also could present some security risks. So I always switch this off. I don't want my phone searching for Wi-Fi and draining battery when it's not meant to be doing anything. And the same thing goes for Bluetooth. So if you allow Bluetooth scanning, when you're walking around in the street, your phone is scanning for other Bluetooth signals and essentially is gonna drain power as well. It could present, and I'm not saying it will, but it could present a bit of a security risk. So I turn those off. The advantage of having those on is your phone can track your location much better when you're using maps or when it wants to suggest things that are around you and stuff like that. So it's up to you, but I personally have those switched off for security purposes. It's a good thing to know about. Let me know in the comments below if you knew about that or not. Okay, so this one is actually a unique feature on the Samsung device. It's something that I think pretty much all phones should have, and it's the secure folder. So set up your secure folder. You can type in secure folder and it'll pop up here. What you can do is create a pin number for a folder that can only be accessed by you. So this will be particularly useful for any of you parents out there. Maybe you give your phones to your kids to play games or watch Peppa Pig or something, and you don't want them to have access to your bank details and all this other kind of stuff. So for you guys, this will be very, very useful. You set up a pin number and that will create a folder on your device that can only be accessed by you with a pin number and you can actually move stuff to that folder whenever you want. Let me give you an example of how to do that. So I can go to an image on my phone. This is my wallpaper that I use for most of my devices. I can go to share 
and then I can choose the secure folder here like so and then that will send it to the secure folder and I can actually even choose to remove it from the current location as well so it doesn't exist in the current gallery it will only exist in the secure folder so that's a great feature there copy to secure folder you can keep your bank details and private information safe if you set that up I do recommend you set that up especially if you let other people use your phone all right next thing to do is to customize your power key here so you think that's your power key that kind of just puts your phone into standby but if you hold it down out of the box it actually doesn't power down the device so for me personally I prefer it to do that actually so what you can do here is go into their settings search for side key pops up here and then you can actually customize what the side key does so right now a double tap on the side key will open the camera I can change that to Bixby or I can even customize a specific app that will open if I double tap the button so I could set that out to be a Google Assistant if I wanted to uh, or any other app really here you can see I've already switched it to power off menu as standard it's wake Bixby and if you guys never use Bixby then there's no point of having hold that button to wake Bixby it just doesn't make sense you might as well have hold the button to power off which makes way more sense I never use Bixby personally and I've been using Samsung devices for years I never use it so that one for me is a mandatory and then customize these other bits if you want to the double push for the camera makes sense for me it's a good little shortcut especially if your phone's closed you can just double tap it and snap a photo very quickly that's a good idea so this next one is kind of buried in the menus here and it's the video enhancer so advanced features scroll down you see video enhancer this is actually off as default the video enhancer will actually improve video picture quality when watching movies and stuff like this and you can actually even customize what apps you want it to kick in on so we could just switch it on and then switch certain things off and leave certain things on like Netflix and YouTube we could turn off TikTok this basically just makes the colors pop a bit more on the screen and going back to the first thing that I said or the second thing that I said about the screen on this device it's one of the best in the market and if you can make it look better with a bit of software like this the video enhancer why not <laughs> so that's a good one in my opinion switch that on like the 120 Hertz and the quad HD scale it back over time see if you can live without it if you can then just leave it off if you notice a massive difference then leave it on it's all down to personal preference when it comes to stuff like this but I've got it on at the moment I'm going to see what kind of difference it makes I'm going to use it for a week and then switch it off and then see what kind of difference it makes after if I notice it or not if I do I'm going to switch it back on if not I might leave it off I'm not sure if it's going to drain battery that much I just think it's going to turn up the uh, the brightness and the colors a little bit Okay, so the next one is very useful for emergencies. So this is Samsung Pay right here. Now you've got Google Pay, you can link your cards to Google Pay and pay with your phone and your watch and all this kind of stuff. So if you set up Samsung Pay with a credit card, I use my American Express with this in the past. The great thing and unique thing about this is if you're at the checkout, you found out you lost your wallet or it's not with you, you left it in the car, you can actually pay on card readers that don't have contactless. It'll actually allow you to hold your phone near the swipe panel on those old school card readers and it will still allow you to pay contactless even if they don't have contactless so this is a great feature that you should make the most of for emergency use but you can use it day to day as well but that's a great feature a lot of people don't know about the fact that you can do that with Galaxy Pay and even Samsung don't talk about it that much so that's a great thing to set up Samsung Pay for emergencies all right are you ready for a ninja tip now i'm guaranteeing you not many people know about this one this is going to blow your mind so go into your settings here at the top go all the way down to the bottom where it says about phone here you see a bunch of stuff that doesn't make much sense at all what you want to do here is go to software information and again you're faced with another page of information that doesn't mean all that much to most people apart from the android 11 which i'll come back to in a minute so here where it says build number very specifically build number tap that keep tapping that and you'll see it'll open up your developer options you'll have to put your pin number in to do this 
you put your pin number in and now your developer mode has been enabled. Now if you go back a step and again, at the bottom of your settings page now is your developer options. Now this opens up a load of extra settings and to be honest with you guys, you shouldn't mess with 90% of these, but there's a few which I think you might wanna do. So if you scroll all the way down, all the, all the way down to here where it says window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator duration scale. You can set all of these to off. They're set to one second at the moment. Now, once you've done that, your phone will be the fastest S20 Ultra that anybody's ever seen. There's literally no animations. It's incredibly snappy, faster. Everything moves quicker if you do this. I personally quite like to have that kind of smooth transitions between the pages and stuff like that. But I know some of you guys out there will appreciate this particular Ninja tip. It really makes a massive difference. And you know what? If you've got an older Samsung device as well, you can do the same thing on those and it will appear to be quicker than everybody else's phone. The Easter egg. So if you go back to settings, go back to about phone, go to system information, go to Android 11 here and tap it, keep tapping it. Turn your dial up to 11 a few times until the 11 pops up like that. And then when you see a little cat pop up here, it'll actually unlock an Easter egg and I'll let you guys explore that Easter egg and see what it does. So let me know what you thought of these tips. If there was anything that you feel should have been in there that wasn't, let me know in the comments below. Everyone else will appreciate it too. I appreciate you guys. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because if you do that, you will be one of the finest subscribers known to man. See you guys in the next one. Don't be late. It's actually quite rudimentary, Dick. You just have to think 14 moves ahead, that's all.